So today we're talking about figurative language. Figurative language is when an author uses words or phrases that have a meaning other than their literal sense. Let's look at um, little comic strips to see if we can understand that a little better. So you see in this one, this character is trying to use a literal meaning. The yellow guy thinks he's being figurative. And I'll give you some time to read that for a second. So as you can see, normally when you use language like it's crushing me or you're killing me, it is not supposed to be literal. You're just trying to use figurative language to explain your experience. And really, you don't actually literally die when you say someone's killing you. So there's the difference. Remember, figurative language is meant to express something, but it's not meant to be taken in its literal sense. So let's move on to a few important types of figurative language. Now there's a lot of different terms that are um, called figurative language, but I'm only going to use a few of them um, and we'll learn some other terms that might also be called figurative language in some other units. So first, let's start with the easiest ones, metaphor and simile. You all should know this already, but we'll take a look anyway. So both metaphors and similes compare two dissimilar things. They are comparisons between two things um, that are not really alike. Now, the difference between metaphor and simile, a simile uses words like like or as. So an, an example of that is, boy, you got my heartbeat running away, beating like a drum, and it's coming your way. So this like here is what makes it a simile. In this example, Nicki Minaj is saying, saying that her heart is beating like a drum. And it's explaining how she feels when she sees this guy. Next, a metaphor is less literal. Um, instead of saying that something is like something else, it's saying something is something else. So, Justin Bieber, I'll be your platinum, I'll be your silver, I'll be your gold. Instead of saying that I'll be like your silver or I'll be like your gold, Justin's saying I will be your platinum. Now obviously Justin is not literally going to be made out of silver unless you're a creepy girl who has a shrine to him in her closet. And the same with Nicki Minaj, her heart is not literally beating like a drum, otherwise she'd probably be dead on the dance floor. So again, a quick review of the difference between metaphor and simile. Both of them are comparing two things, so Nicki Minaj is comparing her heart to a drum, and Justin Bieber is comparing himself to platinum, and the real difference are the little words like or as. So for a metaphor, you are a weasel. A simile, I'm like one. So remember, like or as makes the comparison a simile. If it says you are or it is one, then it is a metaphor. Okay, moving on. Next we have idiom. Now this one is often difficult for students to remember, so I'm going to try to give you two different kinds of examples. An idiom is a figurative phrase commonly used in a specific culture. So it's going to be figurative, meaning the words cannot be taken in their literal meaning, but it's, what's important about an idiom is that it's specific to a culture. So I want to give you an example from our culture, and then I'll give you an example from other cultures so you can see how it's different from a regular figurative phrase. So here's our culture. Crying over spilt milk. Okay, that is an idiom in our culture. Now, we're not actually literally crying over spilt milk. This phrase is supposed to mean don't cry over small things. So we understand that in our culture, but let's find ones that are not from our culture. Okay, these might be a little difficult to read. So um, this one is from, is a Spanish idiom, and it says when snakes wore vests. Okay, you've never heard that before, but it's not literally talking about snakes wearing vests. It's meant to say, um, talk about something a very long time ago. Here's one from Russia. When the crayfish sings on the mountain. Okay, that one is kind of the same as one of our idioms, when hell freezes over. It's supposed to be, or something like when pigs fly. It's supposed to mean it's something that's never going to happen. But obviously, if someone came up to you and said, yeah, that'll happen when the crayfish sings on the mountain, 
you are not going to have any clue what they're talking about because that's a Russian idiom. That is not one that's known in our culture. So that remember when an idiom is figurative language, again, we're not really crying over spilled milk, but it is also something specific to a culture. You'll only be asked about ones that you know, like raining cats or dogs or crying over spilled milk or when pigs fly. All right, our next one, symbols. All right, a symbol is the use of a concrete object to represent an abstract idea. So if you aren't sure about those words concrete and abstract, a concrete object means like a real physical object. It could be, um, you know, kind of anything. A stop sign is technically a symbol. And it's representing a bigger idea. So a stop sign is a sign, but it represents the idea of stopping and not going any further. So what this is used for in literature is often you'll see an object that's supposed to represent a larger idea. Here's an example. If you saw this, if you were reading a story and it talked about a single red rose was left laying on the ground, what do you think that would represent? Usually love or loneliness or love being left behind and making somebody lonely. You can get all that from this picture. You know that that's a common symbol for what that is. We'll be looking at several examples of this as we go through literature, but just know that a symbol is going to be some sort of physical object representing a larger idea. All right, and our last one, personification. Personification is assigning qualities of a person to something that isn't human or something that isn't alive. So personification can be making an animal do something that acts like a person or making an object do something that acts like a person. And here we have an example of both. So you see this cat saying, machine ate my dollar again, not cool. So this is double personification because we are saying that the cat is saying the machine ate my dollar and it's being upset about that. That's personification. But also this phrase, the machine ate my dollar. Now the machine can't actually eat your dollar. So when you go to a vending machine and you say that, the machine can't actually eat anything because it's inanimate. So that line in itself is also personification. So either making an animal or making an inanimate object act in some way like a person is using personification. So be ready with any questions tomorrow and be ready to find some examples of all of these terms in poetry when we get back.